we've been empowering uh, the former fistula patients um, and enabling, facilitating them to go back to the communities and build uh, solidarity groups where they can sustain awareness, you know, about obstetric fistula and general uh, maternal and neonatal health uh, uh, needs of women in our communities. However, this particular time, we are more excited that we are resuming this activity. And we are now resuming this activity at a much higher level than it was before. The community fistula solidarity groups, uh, though 100% uh, women-led, they are founded by survivors and they are women-led, but they bring all together the entire village. Uh, men, uh, former, I mean, the husbands of these former patients, ordinary women who are struggling uh, to, you know, make a living, uh, including those uh, expecting women who are at risk of perhaps suffering from obstetric fistula or even dying due to complications of childbirth. So it brings all these groups of uh, community members together, including the youth, both female and male, in and out of school. So usually these groups are composed of about 30 members, you know, in average, some actually exceed that number. So I'm so excited and the entire team of Terry Water, we are very much excited about this uh, opportunity to resume these community groups uh, we work with. Uh, we have 27 uh, well-established uh, groups, but then we had another 11 who are struggling. They are emerging. And so we are prioritizing getting back to this to strengthen. This solidarity group act as a, a social support system for many of the women and girls who are suffering from obstetric fistula, uh, survivors who are still undergoing treatment, but also other women who are suffering from all forms of gender-based violence, most especially sexual gender-based violence in the community. All girls who have become uh, currently, our country has the highest rate of teen pregnancies, okay? Resulting from the long periods of uh, uh, schools being locked down. So these groups are going to be um, our solutions to mitigating the impact of uh, this long uh, stay home by, by, by students. But also these groups are for sustaining community awareness and the grassroots advocacy for any advocacy efforts to be successful. The voices of the most affected who are the rural women and the rural men, the communities in rural areas, their voices are always silent on issues of maternal health, on issues of sexual reproductive health and rights. So this group gives the rural community, the most poor, the vulnerable women, an opportunity to come together. And they certainly, they say that there is a power in the what? In the collective voice. So when they come together, then we are able to feel that power. And so your support to us is highly appreciated.